Okay, let's see. Let's put together what we have so far from the first five steps and see what we know about this beast. So let's look at the graph and what we know about it so far. Okay, well, the first thing was we didn't have a y-intercept because x equals 0 wasn't in the domain of the function. But when we did plug in x equals 0, we got a hole at 0, 3 quarters. So there's a hole in the graph there. So I'll make it an actual hole. We did find two x-intercepts. We had an x-intercept at negative 1, 0 and an x-intercept at 3 halves 0, so at 1 and a half, 0. Okay, uh, at x equals 2 and an x equals negative 2, we had vertical asymptotes. So here's the vertical asymptote x equals 2. And here's the vertical asymptote x equals negative 2. Remember, these represent equations of vertical lines. The function is trying to be like that vertical line. Now, we saw that as we got close to 2 from the left-hand side, we got very large negative numbers. So we had that behavior on that side of the asymptote. And then as two, we came into 2 from the right-hand side, we had the opposite happening. And so we were up there. At negative 2, when we came in from the left-hand side, we got large positives, so we were up there. And when we came in from the right-hand side, we had large negatives, so we were down there. From the end behavior analysis, y equals 2 is a, uh, the horizontal asymptote. And as we went off to positive infinity, we were a little bit under that. And as we went to uh, negative infinity, we were a little bit above that. And now we start connecting the pieces from left to right to get our graph. So we can start over here. We have to follow this part of the curve and connect up to that part of the curve. So we can do that. I'll try to make that a little nicer. And now we jump down to here. And we start down here. We have to go through this x-intercept, get up to the hole. And then go back down to the uh, through the other x-intercept down that way. So I'll try to draw this uh, in a pleasing fashion here. So we've got to head up. And then head back down. We got that piece, and then here we have to, uh, we start up here, we have to connect it down there. So what has to happen somewhere in between is the uh, crossing of the horizontal asymptote. So I'll try to draw that nicely for us. So it's got to do something like that. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, you know, I didn't think you were allowed to cross asymptotes. Well, you're never going to be able to cross vertical asymptotes in a rational function uh, because in a rational function the vertical asymptotes come from places that aren't in the domain. But you can cross a horizontal asymptote and so you might be curious as to where in fact this actually does cross the uh, horizontal asymptote. So let's just go off on a, on a little tangent here. How can we find that out? Well, uh, we had our expression for r of x. We reduced it down, and we used long division to rewrite our expression as 2 plus minus x plus 5 over x squared minus 4. Now, what does it mean algebraically for the function to cross the asymptote? Well, that means that the y value on the function has to match the y value on this line. In other words, the y value on the function, that's given by r of x, the y value on the line y equals 2 is 2. So this means that the r of x actually has to equal 2. Well, if r of x actually equals 2, 
Now what has to be true about the piece left over? The piece left over has to be 0. So can you tell me where this piece is equal to 0? What value of x is going to make this 0? Well, I think by inspection, in other words, by looking at it, you can see that when x equals 5, I get a 0 in the numerator and a 21 in the denominator. So this actually happens down here at x equals 5. It crosses the horizontal asymptote. Okay, step 6 in our algorithm uh, to graph it is to make a sign diagram. And when would you make a sign diagram? Well, if this were an exam or something, I would tell you to make a sign diagram. But when would you use it to help you out with the graph? Well, I've circled here the behavior near the vertical asymptotes. And, and these were key in helping us connect the graph up correctly. Um, sometimes that analysis can be a little bit difficult. And so a sign diagram can be used to double check to make sure that we have the right behavior happening. So how do you make a sign diagram for a rational function? Well, remember, the purpose of a sign diagram is to tell us where the function values, in other words, where the y values, are positive or negative. And so on the number line, what we need to do is find all the places where the function could change from being positive to negative. In other words, the places where the function could change from being above the axis to below the axis. So in a polynomial function, we would just have to find the zeros of the function, where the x-intercepts would be. But with a rational function, we need to look for not only where the function equals 0, but also where the function does not exist. Because places at vertical asymptotes, the function doesn't exist, and they can jump across. These functions can go from positive to negative on either side of the asymptote. So um, we know from the analysis where r of x equals 0, we know that was at negative 1 and positive 3 halves, so we're going to put those up there. Uh, where r of x does not exist, those were the places in the domain uh, where r of x was undefined, and so that was at 0, plus 2, and minus 2. So I'll put a 0 there, a 2 there, and a negative 2 there. And at these last three points, the function's undefined, so I'm going to put a question mark there. And then at these other two points, I'm going to put a zero there, because that's where the function was zero. And then, just like any other sign diagram, I start picking points. So I, I pick a number in this interval, say negative three. I pick a number in there, say negative 1.5. Pick a number there, say negative 0.5. I pick a number there, say 1. Pick a number here, uh, say 1.75, and I pick a number here, say 3. And I take each of these numbers and plug them into the R of X, and all I care about is if it's positive or negative. So I take negative 3, plug it into the function, work it out, I'd find a positive number there. I plug in negative 1.5, I would find a negative number there. I plug in negative 0.5, I would get a positive number there. I plug in 1, I would get a positive out for that. I plug in 1.75, I'd get a negative number for that. I plug in 3, and I would get a positive number for that. So once again, how do we interpret this? From minus infinity up to negative 2, the function's always positive. That means the graph is always above the x-axis. So even if we didn't have the exact behavior near the asymptote. Knowing the function is above the x-axis means I have to approach uh, this asymptote heading upwards. Between negative 2 and negative 1, the function is always negative. So here's x equals negative 2. Between x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1, the function is always below the x-axis. From negative 1 to 0, and then 0 to 3 halves, the function is positive. That means it's above the x-axis. From 3 halves to 2, it's below the x-axis. And from 2 to infinity, it's above the x-axis. So the analysis near the vertical asymptotes, if that doesn't go well, the sign diagram is your ultimate backup plan. Because the sign diagram is going to tell you uh, if it's above or below the axis, 
and that will force the behavior then near the asymptotes. So that will do it for Checkpoint Quiz 4.2.